I'm Audra Bove, superintendent of MSAD 60. This is starting my second year in the district in this position. About five years ago, the district determined that based on some student enrollment and some of the functionality of our buildings, that we needed to start looking at um, increasing additions in, in the buildings. Really, uh, Lebanon Elementary School was built in 1953, and while we've uh, done a great job keeping it updated, um, it's, it's almost used its entire lifespan for a school. So with that information, plus the enrollment numbers steadily increasing at Hussey School in Berwick and at North Berwick Elementary School, we decided that we would take a closer look at the buildings across the district. When the school board decided to do that, they um, created a building committee that had representation from not only the school board itself, but also members of the three towns. Uh, so we, they started looking at, at all the information and tried to get some uh, different kinds of quotes and really dug down and, and came up with a plan to look at all three um, of those elementary schools. I think uh, one of the questions we're always asked is about how do we decide to do all three buildings at the same time and why we're not looking at just maybe looking at Lebanon first and then North Berwick and then Hussey School. And what I can say to that is to refer back to the, to the answer we had about increasing enrollment. We have increasing enrollment in all three towns. We also have a state mandate that's going to be coming down about public preschool and that will be impacting all three of those classrooms and buildings, I should say, more than classrooms. Uh, so it felt like a good time while we were working with the architect to really incorporate all three of the projects uh, and, and build it that way in our, in our plans. Uh, the, the expense of the project is $70 million. And we always, always consider our community when we have expenses come up. When we're working through our district budget, we work really hard to only ask for those things that are imperative for us uh, to use and, and, to, uh, and, and people to have for our students and for our programs to support that. So we're really conscious of trying to only ask for what we need. We ask, we don't ask for what we don't need and we have historically given back money to the three towns when we've had an opportunity to do so. Um, we know that this is a big ask, uh, but due to accessibility for students, due to student safety, due to, due to traffic concerns, we really feel over the long run that this is a really wise investment for our towns and our students. The, so the bond, I'm, uh, I'm gonna rephrase, there is a question so I'll rephrase it. The bond to pay for the expansion of all three schools is estimated at $70 million. This would be split between the towns according to the proportion for the district appropriations. So very similar to how we handle our regular every year budget, um, we base the funding formula on student, on student enrollment, but also with the mill rate. And we have a very complex formula that we go through to plug that in. So this formula or this uh, $70 million for this build, these building projects would be handled in the same way. There are questions, obviously, about tax impact to homeowners and our residents. So I have tax information right now that I'm going to read up for you. Um, so if you take an average $300,000 house, I'm going to read what that impact to taxes would be for each of the three towns. So I'm going to read that because I want to make sure that I am providing the most accurate information. So should this, bond, should this referendum vote be successful? and go through the first year Bur on a $300,000 house, Berwick's tax increase would be $177.33. Lebanon would be $161.07. North Berwick would be $122.05. I also wanna make sure to, to be really upfront about that. That, is this, that would be the first year. 
The second year, because we would be asking for a bond, it does go up and it goes up a little bit and then it starts going back down as we pay off the bond. So I want to be really upfront about the second year. The second year, Berwick, again on a $300,000 house, Berwick would be $511.11, Lebanon would be $464.23, North Berwick would be $351.79. So that would be the second year, and then it starts going down from there. Again, I, I, what I would say to our, to our homeowners and our residents about the property taxes and about how uh, the increase impacts them, we absolutely understand that this is a big ask. We know that, um, especially everybody that budgets, and works really hard for their money, that uh, this, is, this is a significant um, amount of money when you think about it in terms of what I just described for a $300,000 house. Uh, we would not be asking for this if it was not in the best interests of our students and our communities. Again, we have safety issues at, at the buildings. We have trans, um, you know, travel, in, travel problems or challenges at the at the uh, buildings if you've gone through Huzzy School uh, down Blackberry Hill Road at eight o'clock in the morning or at three o'clock or 315 in the afternoon you know how congested that is and it becomes a safety concern with all that traffic uh, going through there and some of our plans uh, address that in all three of the towns. Uh, so just to give an update on the voter approval process, in October we're having a hearing to talk through um, this, this public hearing to go through the financing and what this vote would look like in November. November, all three towns go to vote and if approved, it needs to be approved by a majority. Um, not by town necessarily, but by majority. And at that point, once that is all done, then we start getting everything ready to go to the bond bank for February. And then from February, there's a really good slide in the presentation that talks through all the steps that go on from there. If, if this does not be, get approved, this first round, the committee will look and meet and discuss the next I steps. Start over if this is not approved. Okay. Okay, if the referendum does not pass in November, the committee, the building committee, along with the school board, will go back and look at our options. We have very few options, however, just uh, wanting to let everybody know that. We have the opportunity to have unplumbed or non-plumbing portables in the different buildings or in the different school sites, on the different school sites. Right now, we currently have um, a a modular at Huzzy School. We have a modular at um, North Berwick Elementary School and those would increase. We would need to increase the use of those. They cost about $18,000 a year to rent and there's an initial startup cost of about $25,000 to run electricity and technology through those, um, those classrooms. So we absolutely have to do something if this doesn't pass because our numbers are increasing in the towns. Um, and there's not a, a lot of other options for us. But in the long run, the best option is to equip our schools uh, with more space and more um, accessibility for all students. So if the, if the referendum, or I'm going to be very, very upbeat and positive and say when the referendum vote goes through, the failing Lebanon Elementary School will be torn down. And that space will be used for overflow parking and different um, other different types of things in that way. The full building, the fourth and fifth grade students that are currently at Lebanon Elementary will move over to the Hanson School. So that school will house kindergarten to fifth grade in Lebanon. We, so just going back to if the bond fails or if the rend referendum fails, the committee, the building committee and the school board will get together to discuss our options, uh, whether we want to put this back out in the spring with our annual budget vote or if we feel like we need to uh, look at projects differently and space them out differently. Uh, that will be the work of the committee with the architect and the school board. There are some funds in the state of Maine 
for buildings, for school buildings. We have over 280 buildings, school buildings in the state of Maine. And the last time there was a list uh, for, for schools to get on the building um, project, it was about two or three years ago, maybe four years ago, and the next list isn't coming out for a few more years. So even if we were to get one of the buildings or all of the buildings on a list, it doesn't guarantee that they will be chosen. Again, we have 280 uh, buildings across the state of Maine and only a handful are chosen uh, for building projects at any given time. I, the, one, of the biggest one of the biggest requirements to uh, have your application approved is to show, again, like space issues, safety issues, for example, like the Lebanon Elementary, um, we're not ADA compliant in Ele Elliot, I mean, Lebanon Elementary School. Uh, so those types of things are, are taken under consideration when you look at, at the body of everybody on the list. I don't believe you can, I don't believe you can apply for the um, building funds after if we had a referendum vote that was positive and we were to move ahead with that. Uh, the federal funds that we get yearly don't um, go toward any kind of building funds. They mostly deal with programs and supplies. So really it's the state building project uh, piece that we would be looking at.